Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. We have quite a, quite a crowd, which is nice to see. Um, and you know, um, Dr. Zales, just for you, we ordered this weather. I want you to know, no rain, it's beautiful. We've got a beautiful backdrop. So just for you. <laughs> so welcome, let's give him a hand, thank you. So I truly have the honor, not only before I begin to read the proclamation from the board, but I have been at this institution for over 22 years now, and I've had the honor to work with so many amazing faculty and staff. And when I continue to hear stories about the legacies that were left behind and that continue at the college, it just makes me more and more proud each and every day. And just the information shared with me, you know, when I got in the room about Dr. Zales, I mean, they, everyone continues to talk about all of the great works that you did and how this all started in 1975. So thank you so much. So I have the honor and privilege to read before you this, this afternoon the resolution that was approved by our Board of Trustees. Whereas the William M. Zales Nature Trails, established in the early 1970s, has allowed future generations to walk the talk of land conservation and stewardship. And whereas the Board of Trustees passed the Natural Areas Resolution in April 1998, resolving to grant continued protection and active stewardship of the designated natural areas on Maine and Romeoville campuses, and whereas in December 2006, JJC was awarded a $35,000 conservation 2000 grant from the Illinois Department of Conservation for enhancing and managing its rare fen wetland community and restore upland Do dolomite prairie and whereas the natural areas restoration and management plan was released in February 2008 detailing a multi-year process for restoring and managing native plant communities that were historically present prior to European settlement in Illinois. The plan will fulfill the mission of the college and natural areas res resolution by providing students in the community with ongoing learning opportunities and restoration and conservation principles. And whereas the designated natural areas on campus help the college earn its lead leadership lead leadership in energy and environmental design certification and whereas in 2009 JJC in partnership with the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency was awarded a $190,000 grant to implement best management practices installing vortex separators, bioswales and wetland enhancements that has improved local water quality, and whereas the Conservation Foundation, one of the region's largest and oldest private conversation organizations, honor Joliet Junior College with their annual Sustainable Development Award in 2016 that recognized several of the college's environmentally sustainable features, including its 124 acres of natural landscaping and restoration of its 65-acre savanna, wetland, prairie, and forested areas, a calcareous fen, as well as its numerous lead buildings, low emission parking, 16-acre arboretum, and recycling programs. Therefore, the Joliet Junior College Board of Trustees, on this date and in recognition of the 20th anniversary of the dedication of the William M. Zales Nature Trails and Arboretum, resolved to continue to offer future generations access to outdoor learning experiences on the college campus featuring local, one-of-a-kind natural resources. Thank you. over I just found out another interesting fact that was shared by Professor Rafak that you were instrumental when they created the ring road to make sure that the road didn't cut through the natural areas brought it closer to the buildings allowing for more natural area space so you truly were inspirational from from the onset in 1975 to protect our beautiful grounds and for that I thank you and I'm very proud of this institution the community is very uh, proud, and like I said, our HLC, oh, I, I didn't even tell you, we had our HLC audit um, and visitors a couple weeks ago, and one of their first comments was how beautiful our grounds are and how they were so impressed with the natural areas and our facilities, and all this started because of you, so thank you so much. 
Um, with that, I would like to introduce our Master of Ceremonies, Professor Andy Neal. Thank you all. The uh, fake mustache is, of course, a homage to Dr. Zales, who had a mustache, a handlebar mustache, similar to this, as long as I knew him. And then as soon as he retired, he immediately removed it. Um, I'm not sure why you ever did that, but... So, I'm gonna take it off for now, I think. Watch, <laughs> we can put it back on. Well, thank you for attending today's ceremony. We have a relatively short indoor portion of the program, and then we're going to move outdoors for the official unveiling of the new locally quarried Dolomite Limestone Monument that serves as the trailhead sign to the William M. Zales Nature Trails. There is a similar limestone monument in the College Arboretum that you may have seen as you drove onto campus today. This is also part of this grand ceremony. But before time gets away, I should also want to thank the planning committee and the many volunteers who helped to sponsor, underwrite, and make today's event possible. So a round of applause to all of those good folks. Well, today marks almost to the day, 20 years ago, when we were dedicating the William M. Zales Nature Trails in Arboretum. It was in May of 1999 that the Natural Science and PE Department and JJ, JJC officials marked the end of Dr. Zales' 31 or so years of service as one of the founding fathers of the college main campus here on Hobart Road. Dr. Zales was instrumental in helping develop the first master plan in 1968. The master plan included an extensive 124-acre outdoor learning laboratory that we often refer to simply as the natural areas. Anniversaries like this give us the opportunity to reflect upon past efforts and accomplishments. 20 years ago, I was six years into my, my degree, <laughs> my career. <laughs> Over this time, I, and as I assume many of my colleagues, have grown at least somewhat fond of this place. Working together, we have accomplished much in the model that Dr. Zales and other mentors helped to nurture. Today's rededication celebration will mark the retirement of two more of my esteemed colleagues, Virginia Pekarski. Just give a wave, Virg, come on. All right. <laughs> and Dr. Polly Lavery, who I shared an office with for 20 years. These two, again amongst others, but these two in particular, um, did a lot to promote and help conserve the college's natural areas and our lake, and I thank them. Thank you, too. Since that dedication 20 years ago, while Bill and his wife Dottie, Dottie, where are you? There we go. Um, over 50 years, right, of marriage? Yeah, Excellent. 53. 53 years. Um, well, they rode off literally into the sunset, settling into western Iowa's Lust Hills, there was a science department who would take up the mantle Bill helped to establish. Faculty and staff have continued to rely on the natural areas for ecological studies in numerous science classes. The community continues to benefit from having a college campus with this unique one-of-a-kind natural setting of trails, traversing native prairie, oak hickory woodlands, a rare calcareous fen, and the phylogenetically organized arboretum. As President Mitchell read in the rededication resolution, we have continued to sustain, restore, and protect the college's natural areas. And we are committed to continuing what an earlier generation of college leaders began decades ago. So it's my privilege and honor to introduce another one of my colleagues, Lisa Perkins, um, she, too, is one of our elders here on campus. <laughs> Work, <laughs> I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm four years out myself. But um, she works in the Ag Hort department, um, and I'm going to let her. So someone that doesn't need an introduction. Much more. Well, thanks for coming. Virginia, you really 
really should be up here. I'm going to talk to you about the Arboretum. I've been working with Virginia for how many years did we figure out now? 15 or 16 years on the Arboretum. The 16 acre Arboretum that was conceived in 1975 and first planted in 1977. Uh, what's encouraged us to keep planting is a fund that was started by the Natural Areas Committee and the JJC Foundation. It's called Trees for Tomorrow. And Trees for Tomorrow currently has about $34,000 in it, uh, which Virginia likes to spend on new trees. Um, I am always giving her suggestions. We go out and find out where we want to put them, what do we need for class, uh, what will complete the collection. So we're always aiming to bump up the plant material out there, uh, which I guess when it was first planted, you had, what, 36, 39 percent of the species on the list in 2004, and now we're up to about 64 percent of the species. So we've done pretty good. We've doubled, just about. Uh, we've inventoried that arboretum two times. The first time was in 2004 when we rode around in the gator and we just rode out what we had and kind of made spots on a map. Uh, last year, through a grant through uh, Morton Arboretum, we actually inventoried the, the arboretum and all the other trees on campus and put tags on them with numbers. And they are now inventoried in the computer. Um, so that was a nice thing. And that is to go along with Maria's effort to get Tree Campus USA. So did Maria leave? When did, then the application went in, yep. and that's Pretty good to go, right? I think so. We are in good standing on that one, so that's a good accomplishment. Uh, so we keep updating the plantings. We get rid of dead material. We find new materials that have been introduced. Uh, we're always trying to make it better. Um, and this is really important. This is uh, one of the highlights of um, one of the classes I teach. I teach woody plants in the horticulture department, and that is where we head every week when we offer that class, whether they go willingly or unwillingly, <laughs> depending on the weather, to look at buds, to look at sticks, to look at leaves. That's how they learn the plant material, learn the characteristics of the trees, how the trees change over the course of the season, things like that. Uh, we've also gone to look at insects, we look at disease problems. We use it as our learning laboratory. It is our outdoor classroom, which is essential for us because you cannot see these things inside. I can bring sticks inside, but it's not the same as the whole tree. So uh, if you ask any of the students, they'd much rather go out and tromp through the arboretum on a crappy day and look at the plant material than sit in the classroom and listen to me drone through a PowerPoint and then show them a stick. <laughs> not so entertaining. Alrighty. I am not the only one that uses the arboretum. Uh, natural science classes use it. They uh, go out there and study various plant materials. I hear art classes go out and use it. They look at the trees as specimen that they might use in some of their artwork. We have community members that call. My kid has to do a leaf collection, according to Virginia, right? Is that somebody calling you to do a leaf collection now? <laughs> so she says, sure, come on out. And then also vet techers will take the dogs out for walks and the neighborhood communities will use the Arboretum too. So it's just an example of how important these outdoor laboratories are for us. And the Arboretum uh, really fits the bill for us. I'm really happy you started it for us. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's my honor again to uh, introduce a man who doesn't need any introduction, but I still want to do that <laughs> so we can savor this moment. Uh, so I'm, I would be negligent if I didn't say a few words about my colleague, mentor, and friend, Bill. I shared an office with him between 1993 when I started until 1999 when he retired. And in that short time, I would end up taking a taxonomy class that Bill taught out at Governor State University. And that was one of those important uh, classes that really shaped my beginning, beginning in botany. Shattered him on numerous field trips, both local and far flung, such as to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park and Wyoming's Wind River Range. And it was Bill's intention to pass on to me the incredible opportunities and responsibilities of leading students into the Wyoming wilderness that I discovered not only my weaknesses, but 
Bill's incredible fitness and enthusiasm. He nearly killed me on those rugged high altitude trails of the Wind River Range, but I survived and went on to lead many of my own trips thanks to Bill's lead. And we need that. We need that kind of leadership and mentorship. Dr. Zales is not only one of the original founders of the main campus, um, the main campus location here on Hobart Road in 1968, he was instrumental in establishing the natural areas and the arboretum, as we've heard. He was the first to recognize the errors of the campus architect's initial designs and had that curve that Dr. Mitchell uh, mentioned uh, tightened up to avoid going through the rare calcareous fen. Dr. Zales holds a doctorate degree in botany and is an expert in the taxonomic organization of North America's bryophytes also known as the mosses and their kin. Dr. Zales was the Natural Science Department uh, chair before PE was merged with the department, so it was just known as the Natural Science Department. He served on numerous JJC academic and college-wide committees and was active and engaged in the faculty union. He was instrumental in helping establish the now widely popular Old Plank Road Trail as part of the Trails Conservation Association back in 1983. He's consulted on many other local conservation initiatives. In retirement, Bill continued to volunteer, um, being a wildlands firefighter battling fires in the West. He's been actively involved in Western Iowa's Los Hills Prairie Conservation work. He and his wife Dottie have been recognized by their local chapters of the Audubon Society and Nature Conservancy for their relentless efforts modeling proper land stewardship in far northwestern Iowa. Most recently, Bill is being honored with the Woodbury County Conservation Board of Iowa with their Friends of Conservation Award. So I am honored to introduce one of JJC's original Mighty Oaks, all the way from the Lus Hills of northwestern Iowa. Let's give it up for Dr. William M. Zales. so I've got to make it short. <laughs> no, I've got three points that I will make, three. Number one, I have to admit, this really was very selfish of me. When I started at JUCO, it was still downtown in the beautiful Joliet Central High School building. I'm teaching botany. So we walked up and down the streets of Joliet looking for trees and shrubs, and it was good, except for the dogs barking at us, and people open a door and say, hey, get out of my backyard. <laughs> when the district bought this land, I came out here to investigate. There's a riparian area, there's a, a, a rock run creek here. There's a pond, there's a lake, there's mature oak trees, there's prairie, there's a dolomite savanna, and I'm going to get to teach botany here. <laughs> That's just too much. I couldn't believe it. And then the architects came, <laughs> and the architects said, we're going to build a bridge over, we're going to put parking lots, we're going to build buildings all over here. And then, um, there were some trustees that said, why don't we put the whole damn campus up by the road and protect all of this? Well, we compromised. Well, okay, we have a beautiful campus in the middle of a beautiful area. Um, we did reroute the road around here, and so it didn't go way out into the fed. That was great. There still weren't enough trees here. I wanted a few more species. Well, let's develop an arboretum, um, phylogenetically, not for mm, uh, you know, landscape beauty. We wanted the most primitive plants working up to the most advanced plants, strictly educational. Well, I couldn't do that myself. Who am I, a junior faculty, no tenure? I can't tell anybody what to do. I had a lot of help. Um, my department chairman for almost the whole time I was here, Dr. Art Wagner, He's doing fine. Um, um, Steve Flanagan, who's no longer with us, uh, he said, yeah, that's great. I'll, I'll go out to the different um, uh, nurseries and well, my crew will plant the trees for you. Uh, the board of trustees at that time said, 
these really sound like good educational facilities, so let's go for it. There really should be more names on these rocks out here than just mine. There was a lot of help, I appreciate that. Number two, during my years here, 34 years at JUCO, um, I recall just about every department, faculty, that had really creative ideas for their students. Let's do this, let's do that. But because those ideas didn't take up as many acres <laughs> as the Arboretum and the Trail, um, they don't get, unfortunately, a big, beautiful stone monument. Those people need to be recognized. And hopefully during negotiations, those kind of uh, contributions are what make Joel Engineer College the outstanding facility is. So we should be honoring them too, not just this. I'm going through pretty fast, all right? Number three, they are almost done here. <laughs> We're celebrating 20 years. Oh, that's cool. Um, just about every year we celebrate JUCO as the oldest public junior college in the nation. Okay, that's more than 20 years. Um, but we should be celebrating 200-year-old oak trees. Um, a fan that's been evolving since the glaciers melted 10,000 years ago. Uh, we should be celebrating that piece of dolomite rock from the Ordovician age. How many millions of years old is that? Um, so we're celebrating something that has some longevity. Now we have to really concern ourselves about how long we'll be able to celebrate that. Um, challenges like the road that we got moved way at the beginning. Um, very recently, we've had a, the threat of a road going right across the fan. Um, the shoulders and lights and traffic, that would have destroyed the integrity of that whole area. A bad idea. Um, so for now, it's not going to go through. Um, the problem is, challenges keep coming up. Uh, about in the middle of my tenure here, the college hired an outside consulting group to assist with long-term uh, strategic planning. Right? And I think these planners just look at campus as a blank piece of white paper. They can do anything they want with it. So they came up with parking lots and buildings and facilities all over the place. And I find when I finally got involved in it, I kind of hit the ceiling. I had tenure then and said, wait a minute, this is crazy. We're, we're using it. That's part of our laboratory. And their response was, well, it's like a, a checkerboard. You know, we can move pieces around. And I said, I like that analogy. Like a checkerboard, there's black squares that don't move to the red squares. You've got the black squares. I've got the red squares, and you can't go there. <laughs> and the students all applauded. They said, and I think they got the message that there are some parts of the campus here that really are very valuable. You can build buildings anywhere. You can't build a fan. You just can't have the kind of trails. Um, being selfish also, to show the value of it, instead of just bushwhacking students out there, we developed a trail, and that's nice. But I got to jog on it also. I mean, that was, I don't know how many hundreds of miles I put. And I could say, well, I'm really out there surveying. I'm out there keeping an eye on my campus. And of course, instead of going to the wonderful cafeteria and having a big lunch, I just went down to the gym in an hour. I could run almost two miles, come back, take a shower, be back in my office in an hour. Uh, I'm probably still alive because of the trail. So that's, that was really selfish of me. But I'm glad everybody else got a, an opportunity to, to uh, enjoy that. <clears throat> also, uh, there should be many more names on that list because I've retired, left it in very good hands. Other people, Tex, Virginia, Fanny, all over, um, <clears throat> it's still here. Uh, you retire and you move out to Iowa and you say, well, <sighs> I hope it survives. It is, and I think it will survive for a long time. That's what's really important. So I am humbled. I am very appreciative. Um, I'm not sure I deserve all the accolades because I didn't do it all by myself, but uh, what, what a tremendous honor this is. Thank you very much. Let me finish with just kind of a little cute story. Um, oh, I said, I'm getting a little sign here. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> when you walk the, the trail out there, um, there's a part that's a boardwalk. Well, again, when I go jogging out there this time of the year, I'm jogging through water and splashing, you know, and I take students out there and we're wet up to here. So I said, well, we need some, we need a boardwalk. Somewhere, Steve Flanagan found these cut up pieces of railroad ties and I used the college truck and went somewhere in Joliet, I don't know how many loads of chunks of railroad tie, and then using the college, we had some kind of a little trail cart or something, and we moved all these ties out on the trail, and in the college bought these um, uh, treated boards, and then I brought my young son Brian out here, and we hammered these boards in, so it was really Brian that built the boardwalk out here. And I, <laughs> so I said, you know, Brian, And now I got a grandson, and he's a helpful little guy. That's, that's, that's culture on my grandson. Okay, um, the last little story. Uh, Dottie and I just returned from a wonderful uh, river trip. We went upstream on the Danube River, and then the, the, the Main River, and then downstream on the Rhine River to Germany. Um, interesting locks and dams, they you go upstream and over the mountain range and back down. They connected these two waterways. I said, go tell an Army Corps of Engineers, they'll try to get the Missouri to go over the Rocky Mountains so we can have boat <laughs> trips there. Right? Well, as you go along the river, the mountaintops are forests. They're tree farms. The, the side hills are vineyards, very picturesque. The flatland is very intensively managed. It's been intensively managed for 2,000 years since the Romans. Um, they have nothing like this. They have nothing like this. Every town you go into, every town, in the town square, they have these big bronze statues of some guy standing on a marble pedestal. And I was kind of chuckling to myself. I hope these people didn't feel I was laughing at their statue um, because, you know, they're proud of that. But every time I'd see one, I'm thinking to myself, thinking about today, uh, I wonder if any of those bronze statues commemorated someone that designed an operator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. So some closing words, closing remarks. The work of land conservation and stewardship is not easy. There are continual obstacles from relentless developers and their supporters who see open space as wasted space. Too few of those in power understand, appreciate, and value the role that healthy natural landscapes play in society. Just look at the damaging and costly flooding that is occurring again this year. Without adequate protected floodplain forests to natural wetlands, destructive flooding will occur again, written off as natural disasters. This is a failure to recognize the role and value of natural open space and the benefits it provides to our communities. In the words of Aldo Leopold from his seminal work, A Sand County Almanac, a thing is right when it tends to preserve the integrity, stability, and beauty of the biotic community. It is wrong when it tends otherwise. Or Scott Freeman from Saving Tarboo Creek. The state of the world defines a twin challenge for all of us. The first is to discover a set of values based on self-restraint and on a commitment to the long-term health of the human and natural communities. The second is to live by them. The goal is to find harmony with each other and with the land. Preservation of natural areas is an investment in our communities. We all live and depend on a healthy, functional landscape. As you've heard today, it has been persistent volunteer advocacy and administrative board support that has kept close to half of JJC's main campus in a natural condition. It will require another generation of plain folks from these parts of Will County, and perhaps by the grace of God, who will assure another 20, 50, 118 years of land conservation here 
along the Rock Run Creek, a place we know as Joliet Junior College. This concludes the indoor portion of today's ceremony. We will now head outdoors approximately 100 meters west to the unveiling of the new William M. Zales Nat Nature Trails and Trailhead Marker concealed beneath the purple veil. Dr. Zales will be helping to uh, do the official unveiling. I'm going to do it with you this time, Bill. Um, so if you want to stay here, um, if you're not comfortable going outside, certainly we welcome to stay in here because we're going to reconvene in here uh, for a reception, re um, share in refreshments, followed by, um, sponsored by the JJC Foundation. So we have some nicely themed cookies and punch in the back. Be sure to also pick up a packet of the native milkweed seed and the JJC Beyond Green Buttons. Those are provided by the Natural Science and PE Department and the Student Sustainability Union. And there's a display in the packets up here. Thank you so very much for attending this historic event. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah.